Hi everybody, it's Brian from the TechMob.net, and today I'll be showing you how to overclock your unlocked Intel Core i Sandy Bridge processor. So for this video, I'll be running a Core i7 2600K. The stock clock speeds are 3.4 gigahertz, and the motherboard that I'll be using for this is a MSI Z68A GD80. So the the cooler that I'm using for my processor is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus performs very well and for my specific overclock the temperatures that it's able to keep everything at is very good as well. I'll talk a little bit more about the temperatures in a little bit. So of course you're gonna have to go into your BIOS so for me the keyboard button that I have to push to get there is the delete button. So my motherboard features the click BIOS which allows you to use your mouse and keyboard to control the features of your BIOS. You need to go ahead and find your overclocking area so when you get to your overclocking menu, there's a bunch of stuff here that you may not know what any of the options do, but that's okay because there's only two options that we really need to focus on. The adjust CPU ratio and your CPU core voltage. So the easiest thing to really work with is your CPU ratio and that pretty much sets the frequency of your processor. So you can see here that it says 45, that's because my current overclock is 4.5 gigahertz. So to figure out your speed, you just need to multiply whatever you choose here by 100 and that will give you your speed. So the stock is 3.4 and you could actually downclock it, I believe to 1.6 gigahertz if you so desire. And the maximum that I think I could choose is six or 60, which would be six gigahertz. So 45 to me seems like a stable overclock it's a pretty big step up from the stock speeds of 3.4 gigahertz as well and it also gives me pretty good temperatures everything is stable and yeah so if you're new to overclocking I would recommend starting at something lower like 40 just to make sure that your cooler is able to keep your temperatures within a reasonable level so for me I'll just leave it at 45 and the second and final thing that you really need to adjust is your CPU core voltage. So I honestly forgot what the stock core voltages are. You can see that on the left side or the right side, it says not to go over 1.4. Um, if your cooling setup is, you know, good, then you'll probably be able to hit 1.4 or higher. But for me and my overclock, I don't really need to go higher than 1.29. So this is where you're going to have to experiment a little bit with the different levels to figure out which would be stable and which would be good for your overclocking desired needs. So whatever you choose, um, just go a little bit higher than the stock voltages. So once again, I forgot what the stock voltages are. So if the stock is 1.19, what you're going to do is just go up a little bit to maybe 1.205, set that as your CPU core voltage boot back into Windows and if you don't experience any random reboots or blue screens of death you could go ahead and run a Prime 95 test and Prime 95 is basically a uh, CPU stress testing utility it's very simple and straightforward to use so I would let that run for maybe 30 minutes to an hour to see if it's stable and go ahead and monitor your temperatures as well with something like speed fan or if your motherboard came with its own utilities such as MSI's control center Go ahead and use that to monitor your frequencies and your temperatures. If everything seems okay, you know, your temperature is okay, and if everything just seems stable, if Prime 95 isn't freaking out and stuff, then you could probably either leave your settings where they're at, or you could in fact lower your CPU core voltage a little bit. So for me and my setup, my 4.5 gigahertz overclock needs a 1.290 CPU core voltage. If I choose something lower like uh, 1.270, um, Prime 95 will freak out, like the workers will stop working, I'll either get a blue screen of death. So because of that, I just needed to raise my CPU core voltage a little bit, so I brought it up to 1.290. And after doing you know, the usual stuff, Prime 95, games, video editing, everything is stable. I left Prime 95 up for 24 hours and everything seems just fine. So this is my CPU core voltage and my temperatures are about, the maximum that my temperatures will hit is about 72 degrees Celsius, which is okay. It's a little bit high, but it's still in the acceptable range. So, you know, 
those are pretty decent temperatures and I'm willing to work with that because it's not like my processor is going to be running 100% full load with stress all the time. Gaming won't bring your processor up that much anyway, that's mostly a GPU thing. Uh, video editing does, but it's not like I'll be rendering videos for 20 hours at a time. So I hope you found this video useful, it's a bit longer than I thought than I wanted it to be, but hopefully you've been able to figure out how to overclock your Sandy Bridge processor easily. Um, this was pretty much the first time I've overclocked a processor and I was pretty amazed at how easy it is to do so. Um, I'm not going to overclock my RAM, I am using DDR3 1600 RAM and I don't really think I need to overclock it, everything seems just fine. All my uh, uh, RAM voltages are the same, they're just auto and all that stuff. So. That is about it with the video. If you have any comments or questions about this or anything else, you can go ahead and leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with my video. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.